I'm putting crossover parts on a lightweight mid-engine sports car and it makes perfect sense. Hello, my name is Oliver Picard and welcome to beautiful Limousin France. In today's video, we're going to be working on the front bulkhead. We are finally getting towards actually putting some panels in this car because you might remember that I made this front bulkhead in a previous video using the old chassis as a pattern. And if we take a step into the car, take this out, maybe it can make it easier for us both to get in. Stand up. Stand up. There we go. Right. In here, I've been following a lot of other GTM builds on the Facebook group. And most people are kind of restoring cars and stuff like that. There's nobody doing what I'm doing. But they've all said that when they've gone to register their cars and have their cars inspected, everybody has insisted that they have a centre console that ties everything together. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a centre console that ties into the bulkhead and it's going to have the added bonus of holding in and being a mounting point for the heater. So not only will it tie this front knee bar into the centre tunnel and make everything stronger and stiffer, but it's also going to be our mounting point for our heater as well. And I have the heater right here. Italian car fans amongst you may be familiar with this. This is a heater from a, an original Fiat Panda. Now, my reasons for using a Panda heater over any other sort of heater are quite simple. I didn't want something that was massively complicated and electronically controlled because that adds wiring, complication and weight. I didn't want air conditioning and I wanted a, a completely self-contained unit. Many small car heaters for kind of small hatchbacks and stuff like that have the heater control unit as one unit, then they have the heater unit and element as another unit and then they have the heater blower as another unit. I don't want to have all that messing about and I don't want to have all those packaging problems. Whereas this is super lightweight. It's really, sim it's really simple when you're online to look at pictures of heaters and stuff and think, oh, that's small or oh, that's lightweight. And then you actually go to look at them and they are giant, big, heavy things. And this is simply not the case with a Panda heater. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. I had a few options. I made a short list and I actually went to some scrapyards and stuff and had a look around and going to a scrapyard was a really good chance to kind of pick a heater up and, and measure it and weigh it and make sure it was what, like I say, looking on the internet alone can be deceptive. So we looked at Peugeot heaters, we looked at some British car heaters, we looked at some Renault heaters and the best possible one I could find, this wasn't actually on my list, I found it and it's just absolutely perfect. It's cable controlled, it's mostly made of plastic, so that's it. I don't usually like plastic, but it's incredibly light, it weighs nothing. This box is actually not a real box, it's just a vent with a flap in it. So that can actually be removed if I need to. So I can actually duct this heater anywhere I want. So my plan for this centre console is very much a continuation of the centre tunnel. It's going to come from here back towards the front bulkhead and it's going to tie in the center tunnel, the knee bar, the front bulkhead all together while providing mounting for the heater. Because why shouldn't a center tunnel be structural rather than it just being a piece of the dashboard, it can actually add strength, safety and rigidity to the car. And uh, as Colin Chapman said, if a thing can do more than one job, then even better. So this will be a mounting point for the heater, it will be strength of, you know, a structural part of the chassis and it will of course give me a centre console for centre console stuff. Although, 
my center console won't have my heater in it because the heater actually sits just to one side. Let me get the heater and show you. So we're now going to mock up the heater just to show you what it will look like and show you just how perfect it is. This isn't the heater I actually spec for this car. It's actually better in every single way. I couldn't believe it when I found it, but uh, it was just something I didn't consider. When I planned this car out from the beginning, I had kind of every single detail planned and the heater that I actually spec was not this good. And when I found this one, I just couldn't believe how, how much better it was than my design. So we're gonna put some wooden shims in just to, uh, shims, shims, bits of wood in just to hold it in place and get the heater core itself and just pop it in like that while chucking everything everywhere come here and you can kind of see we can i can actually get it better than this obviously but you can actually see how it's absolutely perfect. We have the screen blower here, we have the, the feet blowers in the correct position for feet, and we have a forward blower, and it fits beautifully. And the distance from here to here is exactly the same as here to here. You couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it more perfect than it is. And as you can see, it's even offset to one side. So it clears a steering column or a pedal box or any of that stuff. It's not going to interfere with anything because it's well away. I couldn't have designed it better myself, which is bizarre because I didn't design it at all. I hadn't planned on using this heater, but it just shows that in engineering and design, there's always umpteen ways to do something. And you've always got to be prepared to kind of accept better ideas when they come and accept better things when they come. It's really easy to be set in your ways and to be like, oh, I designed it like this and so, but actually the heater that I spec for this car wouldn't have been anywhere near as good as this. You know, not everything can work out as well as the engine. You know, this engine, it's, it's like it was designed to be in the car. The suspension is like it was designed to be in the car, but this heater is way, way beyond my expectations and far, far better than actually what I plan to use. And yes, if you're wondering, these scissors are antiques. They were a gift from a friend who has a, an antique shop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template of the top of the heater. So basically a cardboard template that slides over the heater, then we can put it against the uh, bulkhead and chop that out. And it just makes it lots easier because I can take a little bit out of cardboard in two seconds, but obviously you don't want to make mistakes in steel because I've only got one bulkhead. So I need to clearance the front bulkhead in order to move the heater up enough to just maximize space and get it just on the right angle but this cable's in the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to detach the cable from this end and i'm going to remove it and then what we can do is we can put a hole in the bulkhead with a grommet in the future and route the cable actually through the bulkhead rather than just through this little clip with a little pop rivet on it and it's just like a bicycle cable. There's a little grub screw, you just pull it out.
if you're wondering why this is a squiggly line, it's because I drew along the uh, edge of the body, and the edge of the body is a squiggly line. Soon need, we'll soon neaten it up. That's a bit better. Remember ages ago when I mentioned wiping panels with oil to uh, to stop them rusting until you came to use them and how gross everything got because everything stuck to it. Well, that's the result of that. So we now have our centre console and our bulkhead that we can mock up our heater in. I'm really happy with what we've achieved today. We have the bulkhead mocked up, we have the heater mocked up. Okay, it's only on wooden blocks. It's not actually bolted into anything yet because there's nothing to bolt it to. And we have this center console made that's actually a structural chassis brace and uh, will help keep me safe in the event of an accident that this car's never gonna have. Because by the time I finish this thing, it will have so many hours of love and effort and caring and frustration and swearing in it that I'll drive it around like an old lady because I'll be scared to hurt it probably. But, uh, but should the worst ever happen, this is actually, this piece of a dashboard is actually structural to the cart and should keep me safe. So that's great news. That's one side mocked up, but to me it looks a bit heavy, so let's drill some big holes in it and dimple dye it. using a paintbrush and a little bit of grease to grease up my dimple dye because there's nothing worse than getting your dimple dye tool stuck in the panel that you've just spent ages making. So, lube it up. And which way does it need to go? It's that way, so it goes that way. That's the other thing. Don't dimple dye it the wrong way. This dimple dye tool was worth every penny of the nothing it cost.
there you go. We've made a centre console and then cut most of it away. But it is structural in the car. It is very, very strong. Like I could now stand on top of my D-bar and jump up and down once it's all welded in and nothing would move and nothing would rattle and nothing would shake. So that's absolutely brilliant. Now, you might notice that it is very narrow. This is a concession from the size of my legs and the size of my knees. I used to own a Daihatsu years ago and the center console was like this. And on long journeys, my knee used to rub against the center console and it used to make my knee ache. So I was very aware with this car that I'm going to have a steering column here. And so I need to be able to get in and out easily without bashing my knee on the center console. And we've made provisions like this top edge has actually been this way so that I can actually get my hand in and down so I can help yeah, I can bring wires up and stuff like that. I've also left provisions for this heater vent here so I can make a duct, so I can have a little little vent so I can get air blown on my hands as I drive, which is something that I actually really like in summer. I get hot hands when I drive, I don't know why. It's a very nice way to make uh, a very small car not feel claustrophobic, which is... Uh, which is obviously important, especially on long journeys and stuff like that. If you're in a if you're in a tiny room, it has to be a nice tiny room, doesn't it? And because it's not kind of all sealed boxes, it's not going to be super boomy, which is another thing that can happen when you have cars that have big metal elements like this. It, they can be very um, you get a lot of vibration through the car, and the entire car turns into a big bass speaker. So obviously these won't rattle because they're a lot stiffer than a than just a flat panel. This one is super slim line and super out of the way and lovely. And we also have room for the other switch. There is an electric switch that goes with these that's for the fan control. So we have room for that as well. I'm absolutely ecstatic with it. So tell me what you think down in the comments below. I know it goes with the uh, inner sills. Do you think it's too much? Do you think that it's not enough? Do you think that it's just right? Like I said, let me know down in the comments below. Please be awesome to each other. If you'd like to watch any more Pandora, there's a Pandora playlist with all the Pandora videos in it right there. And there's some other videos there. And if you'd like to subscribe, make sure you click on my face. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.